Um, I want to introduce myself. I'm Madonna McDermott. I'm the Executive Director for Health, Wellness, and Counseling. So we're going to talk today about um, the health of your student and how we can help support him and as well, or her, and as well how you can. Um, I always start my presentation with this very old quote. It's from 300 BC. When health is, is absent, wisdom cannot reveal itself, art cannot manifest, strength cannot fight, wealth becomes useless, and intelligence cannot be applied. Um, I believe very strongly that unless there's a really good foundational health of a student, it's really hard for them to achieve academic success. So we work in a very holistic manner to make sure that that happens. So it's not just the physical health that's important, but we also look at the spiritual, the emotional, um, our community and environment. What are we doing holistically to make sure that your student stays healthy and is able to succeed academically? Um, we're committed to advancing the overall health and well-being of your student and the entire community. These are um, educational opportunities for your student to learn lots of things about the, how to manage their own health, how to live a long, healthy life, some new healthy lifestyle behaviors, as well as how to become wise consumers of healthcare resources and how to maneuver a pretty complicated system. Um, and it's complicated for our domestic students as well as for our international. We also function on a pretty broad scale. We also adhere to the Institute for Healthcare Improvement triple aim to make sure that our, our, the care that we provide is high quality, cost effective, and safe. So we wanna make sure that you know that your students, if they do seek care here, um, that's just within the, the health services, the clinical care, that you know that it's a high quality, cost effective, and safe. Um, so we work from prevention, it's along the spectrum, so prevention, early detection, care of acute and chronic illness, and then also coordination of care. Sometimes students end up in the hospital, end up with having appendicitis or ACL repair, or and so there's lots of things that need a little bit more help in terms of coordination of care, and that's a part of what we do at all uh, as well. But health is a prerequisite for academic success, so making sure that you know what's available to you. Um, so basically, we are your students' clinic while they're here. Um, I think it's around 75% of our students identify uh, health services, which is the acute care. It's our medical clinic here on campus as their primary care facility. Many of your students are graduating from their pediatrician or their family practice. They're here the vast majority of the time. Some are still within the community during the summertime, and we're still open in the summertime. So we become their primary care. We um, use electronic health records. We communicate with them using secure message. So it makes it pretty easy to have the ongoing care even when they're not on campus. We're located right here on campus, the north end of campus, um, the skywalk between Morrison and Brady. We're right underneath that. So you come in from the outside. Um, students can make appointments. We can show you that one. Um, by a number of ways. They can call, they can walk in, they can schedule online. If they're not seeing the time or what they want um, to be seen for, they can uh, call and um, sometimes it's just that we're full of the walk-in or the same day appointments. I wanted to show a little bit about our team because um, in college settings, and uh, their health, campus health service can be anything from a nurse-run clinic where there's really limited um, resources to a full service clinic, which is what we have. Um, our medical director is an internal medicine physician, so very skilled, very knowledgeable, had worked in the Alina system here for many years before coming here. We have a number of uh, nurse practitioners, which I also am, so I see students um, a couple half days a week as well. Um, and then our other nurse practitioners, we have a full-time uh, RN, a psychiatrist, we also have a psychiatric nurse practitioner, we have physical therapy, we have a dietitian, um, and then we have some support staff, medical assistant Kim, Anna Konopaki, sorry, is at our front desk. She's the voice of our, and face of our clinic. Um, Kathy St. Mary, um, we do use third-party billing, so insurance is how we pay for the services that we use here. And um, just as you would any other clinic, your student needs to have their insurance card when they come to the clinic, if they've forgotten it, no problem. We just remind them, they still get their care. 
submit to the insurances, and then whatever is left on that uh, from like your copay, et cetera, is put onto the student bill. You will get your e EOB or the estimation of benefit, um, so you'll know what to expect. Uh, and we just found out yesterday that we will be able to use HSA, the health savings account. So your student, if you have that, will be able to get the, uh, that taken off your bill using that method by the fall. In addition to this, we also work really closely with uh, counseling and psychological services. You heard Steve talk a little bit about uh, transitions um, a little bit ago. We work with all of the, that staff as well. So he has uh, five staff psychologists, three doctoral interns, three practicum students. And that's to address the mental health of your student. That, that happens in a number of ways, both in the counseling services uh, location, which is the third floor of Murray Herrick, um, they always have crisis hours every day. It's for short-term therapy, so making sure that they're getting the care that they need, whether it's here on campus or referred out, out and coordinating their care. Um, they also do a lot of outreach, so they do a lot of education to faculty and staff, to residents' life, to make sure that your students are getting the type of care that they need. Um, we work a lot uh, in the health services, so the clinic, again, with referrals. Many of that is happening in in-house, right, at St. Thomas. Um, when you think about, well, why should I have my student go to health services, the reason is that, that the, we are experts in college health. We know how the system works here. We know what the students are experiencing. We know that when finals are happening, when the high stress periods are happening. Um, we understand the majors. You know, music is a really hard major. I hadn't realized that before coming to higher ed and engineering, and you know, so we know those that have extra stressors. Um, we know students that are ROTC, that are in athletics. Um, we also have all the referrals in-house that we work very closely with, the Dean of Students Office, Campus Ministry, Academic Counseling, Career Services, basically any um, organization that's here on campus will interface with. If we're seeing a student multiple times and we get the sense that they're extremely isolated, that they're anxious, they're not connecting well with other students, um, we, we'll help them find on the website, where are the clubs and organizations? How can you get involved? So the questions that the providers ask are very different than that you would get in a, another facility. Um, when we talk about academic impact, I think Steve probably talked about that six to eight weeks. You know, the students, it's really exciting those first few weeks. It's, it's a time of um, kind of that honeymoon period. This is all new and exciting. And then about six weeks into it, eight weeks into it, the honeymoon wears off and all the you know, midterms are due. You might be getting that tearful phone call saying, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't like it here. I want to come home. Um, we also know about that. We talk with students and, um, and parents about uh, grief and loss. I mean, many of us know about grief, grief and loss because of um, death and dying, but we don't think about grief and loss, what our students are experiencing. Think about when they're moving away. Granted, that's all really exciting, but they're, they're, what they're losing or what the grief process is about, they no longer are sleeping in their own bed. They don't get to see you every day. They don't have the same food. They don't have their dog. They don't have their music, their car, their friends. Everything that's familiar to them is no longer there. So they really are adjusting to a grief and loss process. And for you, when you see or hear from them that midterm time um, is just saying what you're experiencing is normal. And I know you're gonna get through it. It's hard. Just reinforcing what their experience is normal and that there are lots of resources to help support them. The other thing that we're expert in is community health. Um, we stay very in tune with what's happened nationally and internationally. When University of Iowa had their mumps outbreak, we're aware of that. When University of uh, Minnesota had a meningitis outbreak, we know about that. If we have any um, unusual outbreak here, we're working very closely with the Minnesota Department of Health. Um, and so we're, we're kind of public health hats many times, we're wearing those. Um, and our responsibility is protecting and maintaining the, the health of the entire community. If we're seeing that we have a lot of gastroenteritis, so diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, did they just get back from a study abroad someplace? Is it happening in our cafeteria? Are they on a particular team? And it's something that they're all sharing. So we do a little bit of that work as well. 
So these are just some of the services I thought that I'd throw up, um, making sure that people know that it's pretty extensive from preventative. So we do a lot of physicals, sports physicals, just regular pre-op physicals. Um, we do dietary consultation. A lot of that has to do with folks who may have some disordered eating or history of disordered eating. Oops, I've oh, got to go back here. Um, skin's cancer screening, you'll see a, a little photo here in a few minutes that shows um, a new service that we're providing, which is dermoscopy. And um, our, what we know now is that young adults were seeing more malignant melanoma earlier. And part of that has to do with our ozone, has to do with um, using tanning beds, a lot of different things. So we used to think, oh, that's something that happens only later in life. Well, that's not. We had a student who graduated last year where Gail kept on pushing him. You got to go get that figured out. You got to go have that seen. Finally, he did after graduating, and it was a melanoma. So um, Mary Lee, the, the internist, our medical director, has gone on for extra education and, and is now doing a lot of that first step of taking a look at it, screening it, um, biopsying, sending it off, and then going from there. Vaccines, we do a lot of vaccines. We have flu shot clinics. Um, we'll start with, well, we'll start in the end of, October, of September. We do about 10 or 12 outreach. So we come over to this building, Nurses are in a lot of the other buildings, the library, in the clinic, wherever they are, we're going to be um, at a welcome weekend, no, homecoming weekend. Um, we'll be doing that as well. Uh, so you can see some of those acute care. I just put acute illness up there. The number one is upper respiratory, as you can imagine. So this year, what we're trying to do, because we know that more and more people have a high deductible, and that can be a pretty big expense. So what we're going to, trying to do is shift and at least have some more screening done. We've moved, um, hired a new medical assistant, freeing up the nurse so that she can see more of, okay, I have a sore throat. Well, it's only been four hours. Have you tried this, this, and this? Therefore, so they don't have to see a provider and, and have that charge incurred. Um, concussion management. We also do a IV hydration. Some of our students, we do see a lot of mono. This is just that age group. It's a communicable disease. Um, and sometimes it just takes a day or two of you know, a little extra fluid, a little bit of extra care. Um, allergy shots, we, we see a lot of students for allergy shots. They'll need to have a consent for that and work with Beth, the RN. Um, so these are just some of the other ones. Uh, mental health, like I said, we work very closely with the counselors here and the psychiatrist and making sure that your student is seeing the most appropriate provider. Most times it's collaboratively. Um, that they get a better outcome if they're seeing both a counselor and a medical provider. Um, ADHD, if your son or daughter has um, uh, ADHD or ADD and is on medication, if they're in the area, we, you know, it's easier probably if you just continue on. However, if they've had all the testing that we have on our website and they'd like us to res take that over for them, we can do that because it's, it's kind of a hassle. They have to have the medication every month um, ordered. So these are just some of the services. Um, we're very student-centered. What we're about is about your student. And that's why we're all here. Um, out of the staff that uh, I work with, I'm trying to think, at least three of us, me included, I have a sophomore here now. Um, another one is a freshman, another one's a sophomore. So three of the providers have students here at St. Thomas. And we treat your student as we want someone to treat our student. So they are well taken care of. If it's an emergency, we're going to contact you. Otherwise, they are protected under the HIPAA laws, the privacy laws. So if you call us and ask us, have they been seen there, we can't say even yes or no. However, if it's an emergency, if we call for an ambulance, we're going to call you. Um, if they're you know, pretty sick, we're going to pick up, ask them, would you like us to give your parent or a family member a call, let them know what's going on? If they say, no, I can handle it, fine. If, if not, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, easy access. We start the day with many of these slots open, so it's an open access. By the end of the day, they're full. So we try to see as many of the students as we can, same day, triage those that really need to be in. Low cost, we are um, at about the 50th percentile. So we're lower than the Alina and the other clinics around town. It, it doesn't mean that it's free. So that's sometimes uh, surprising. Um, as I mentioned, high quality. The, the folks that are caring for your son or daughter are really exceptional. Um, and safe. Um, so these are the ways that they can make an appointment. They can do it online. Um, I talked about insurances billed and co-payments or other deductibles will be put on the student's account. 
This is some of the um, marketing that you'll see in the fall or your son or daughter will see. And so one of the examples is the flu clinics. We want to make sure that your student is immunized so that they don't become ill and infect other people. Um, I think one of the first years, are, it was the first year that they had the law school built. We had an outbreak over in the law school and um, you know they had like a handful of students that were missing and they, if you you know, develop influenza, you're sick, you're out of class usually for three, four, five, sometimes longer. And it's hard to do as an undergraduate, it's hard to do as a law student. So we offer lots of opportunities for faculty, staff, and students to be immunized. This was um, one of the uh, marketing that we did for the new dermoscopy. Uh, again, Dr. Votel Caval handles that. She does a great job with it. So if they have any lesion, we know that it can take months and months to get in to see a dermatologist. This is a way that they can get in quickly. It also may take months and months and months to get in to see a psychiatrist. We can usually get them in to see our psychiatric uh, provider within a, a couple, couple of weeks. Um, so what are some of the benefits of having an on-campus clinic and having your students seen at either the health services or counseling services? Well, first and foremost is improved health. We can keep them and promote them to a better level of, of health, whether that's emotional or physical. Increased class attendance. We do what's called a patient experience um, survey, and it's about 23% of students say that they um, are able to miss class, able to avoid missing classes because of the care that they've received at health services. It's comparable to that at uh, counseling. Uh, increased academic success. Um, we've asked students a question about whether or not it allowed them to stay in school. Again, about the same. 20% say that it actually helped them stay in school. So it's, it's important that they be able to get their health addressed, health needs addressed quickly and um, I think nearby. Uh, many times what the provider will do if you came in and they're still worried about you, they'll give you a call, they'll follow up, they'll say, why don't you swing back and see me just for a few minutes tomorrow or the next day, just making sure that they're going in the right direction. So it's that little extra care that you're, you're not going to get in the community. Increased retention, increased self-care. Um, when I talk about the whole spectrum, the wellness center is the other arm of that. That's our health promotion and illness prevention. We'll talk a little bit more about that. They do a lot of work on sleep, um, healthy sleep behaviors. Also a lot of work on alcohol um, uh, reduction e efforts, um, just those behaviors that will help them have a more healthy lifestyle. Uh, sleep, alcohol, stress reduction, um, uh, just self-awareness, and increased knowledge of how to utilize a healthcare organization effectively and co cost effectively, especially. Um, that many of you, I imagine, have provided all that for your student, and now they wake up, they're ill, and you're not there, so what do they do? And so if they can call and talk to a nurse, help them figure it out, or they can come in and say, you know, this is what I think you need, let's move along with this pl uh, plan of care. They'll also get a, um, uh, sent to them electronically, which is their, the summary of the care that they received. So again, in summary is that we're here to help your students stay healthy and to have a, a healthy long life. And that it's not, a, it is a, a prerequisite to academic success and an important part of how well they do here. So we wanna make sure that you know we are here to support your student in many, many ways, not just caring for them when they're acutely ill, but on prevention, early detection, and coordination of care. If your son or daughter has a chronic condition, um, we, we care for lots of folks with diabetes, asthma, malignancies, POTS, lots of cardiac stuff. We work with those um, experts in the community, so they will probably continue to have like, their endocrinologist and their other subspecialists, and we'll coordinate with them. If they're receiving therapy over at the U of M, we'll be the ones drawing the labs, sending it over to them, and uh, coordinating the care along with them so that they're not just trying to figure this out all by themselves. Um, and then I wanted to make sure we had a few minutes at the end of this to see what are other folks' concerns or thoughts about um, their students' health and well-being. I just want to make sure that you said that fall you'll have the FSA starting? Yes. Okay. We've been working on that for a few years, so we finally will have um, the ability to, to access that for folks. So to keep it off their bill and get the FSA? 
Yeah, um, Kathy, the insurance specialist hasn't gone through the training yet, so exactly what that looks like, I'm not sure yet, but she's working on gaining that expertise. And you take all insurance, or do we have to call ahead of time? No, we, we do bill all insurances. What I would suggest, we have contracts with a lot of the major folks here in the community, Blue Cross, Blue, Seal, uh, Blue Shield, Cigna, Medica. Um, however, if you have a subspecialized plan, you may want to call them and say, I want to make sure we're not out of network or my son or daughter's at, at college and this is where they're going to be. Can we make that be part of the network? So that's a, a good thing to look into. And prescriptions, if they, sorry. No, this is, these are good questions. <laughs> Whether, if you have a, a standing prescription, we don't have a pharmacy on campus. Um, the closest one, there is a CVS about five blocks away. So that's within the area where public safety will also give a ride if it's okay. January and 20 below. Um, I also just found out today that's also part of the, what's it called, the debit card? The uh, Express Dollars. Express Dollars has CVS on it. Um, if they're wanting to increase it, they can you know call it in or send it to that CVS and he can just get it. If he's coming to see us, we can send it any place that they want electronically. Um, there is another one that we work, we work with any of them. We have Walgreens, et cetera. Um, and sometimes while I'm on my way home and I live up north, can you send it to this one? Yes, we can do that. Or um, there's the St. Paul Corner Drug. It's a smaller owned one. They deliver, so we work with them on, on deliveries. So there's options. There's lots of options, yep. become what, which, like how low do you let the heart rate go and stuff before you have the ambulance come and then which hospital would they go to? Okay, so yeah, we can do, and we do that for a number of faculty and staff and students is do monitoring of certain types of uh, vital signs, blood pressure, pulse, etc. And sometimes it depends on what their provider, their outside provider has recommended, like if they're seeing somebody for hypertension or for hypotension like POTS, um, it may, it'll be tip depending on them. They're given a card with all of it written down with the dates and times as well as they'll have access to it electronically. And then we would kind of depend on what the situation is. So if you have somebody who's, they're normally running around a 50 for their, their pulse, which is pretty low, but not if you're a long distance runner. And they say, oh, that's what I'm normally in, then we wouldn't do anything. But if it's somebody who I'm normally in the 80s and I'm in the 40s, um, then we probably would be um, calling for an ambulance. So it's highly variable. And then where do they go from? What hospital? Yep. Are they to? yep. We're fortunate in that we have a lot of amazing hospitals here in town, and we really have sent students to all of them. Um, we work closely with Regents um, in St. Paul, United Hospital in St. Paul, this Health East, University of Minnesota. Those are the ones that we tend to use. But we will go any place that somebody wants to go, and especially if they have a pre-existing relationship with that facility. But good questions. Yeah. So should I send my son to school with uh, an extra insurance card? Yes, absolutely. They should have that anyway. If they're in a motor vehicle accident or anything like that, they should always have their insurance card on them. And if, if they don't have it, it's so easy anymore. We'll just say, we'll call a parent and get a picture of it and send it to us and it's taken care of that way. Can we just send one to you so you have it on file? We know we've you, you could do that. Um, and there, uh, you could do health services. That's mine. Oh, the, yeah, the, on the website there is um, a place to send it. Mm -hmm. It would be to the insurance office. Okay. Yeah. All right, any other questions? Well, thank you, and I know the day is getting long, and you're doing great, and you're almost there, so hang in there. Vacation, so. So who do you have here? Our youngest is coming here. Oh, last yeah. one. Yep. yep, plus we have a junior here now, too. So. Okay, so you got two here. Yep. I have a sophomore here. She's going to be in Spain this year, though. Yeah, our sophomore is going to be, our junior is going to be in uh, Rome in the fall. Rome, oh, this is it fun? Yeah. Yeah. She's working hard to save up her money because I said, you know, I'll pay for your room and board, but rest is for you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Your tattoos are beautiful. They really are. <laughs>